Want to learn how to make these cute little bunny ears? Stay tuned to find out how. Not macrame, and in this tutorial, we will be going over not only how to make macrame bunny ears, but we're going to attach these bunny ears to the back of a mirror and turn this pattern into a bunny ear mirror project. Easter's coming up, so this would make a fun DIY project for that. And because of its minimalistic design, this will look great in any room, but especially a nursery or a kid's room. So what we did for this pattern is we started off with a metal ring and we wrapped it around with some vertical Larset knots. Then we made the two ears, and the majority of that pattern is made with double half-inch knots. This is a beginner-friendly project, but if you aren't super confident about the double half-inch knot just yet, this project is perfect practice for that. But if you do want to brush up on it first before diving right in, we do have a free 50 knots and sentence ebook for download over on bochinot.com. It's a helpful guide to learn various different knots. You'll have all the knots that we go over in today's tutorial in that guide. Once we are done making the ears separately, we will then attach all the pieces together at the back of the pattern. You will need glue for this project because the only way you can get the ears on securely at the back of the pattern is with glue. I like to secure the ring to the back of the mirror with knots rather than glue, but for efficiency purposes, glue works great as well instead of tying the knots, then you wouldn't need the crochet hook. This is such a fun project and I really hope you guys will have fun with it. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button to stay tuned to our latest tutorials. And with that said, let's jump right in. You will need some materials and supplies for this pattern. Other than cord, you will need a ring and a mirror. For this pattern, I'm using an 8 inch mirror along with an 8 inch ring. You do need to have a ring so that you can make your macrame off of. And here you can see that I have two slightly different size rings. The one that I have here right now is an 8 inch diameter ring. It fits perfectly on the outer edges of this mirror. And then I have a second ring that is slightly smaller at 7.5 inches in diameter. For the purposes of this pattern, I'll be using a slightly smaller one, a 7.5 inch one, just because it sits nicely on the inside of the ring. You can find these rings and mirrors available on Amazon and I'll link them in the video description below for you. The cord I'll be using for this pattern is a 5mm single strand Egyptian Giza cotton cord from our Lush line. Giza cotton is known for its premium quality, its super fine fibers, making it super soft to the touch, and it also has a really nice shine to it. This cord does hold its twists well, so it doesn't unravel fairly easily, making it very easy to work with. If you're interested in finding out more about this cord, you can check out what I've tagged in the description below. To begin, we are going to take the longest strand of cord at 320 centimeters long and we're going to make several vertical lark's head knots all around the ring. Take a few inches on one end of the cord and place it on top of the ring. Take the long end through to the back and through the left side and then through to the back underneath, pull it through on top and you should see a lark's head knot loop form here. Then we're just going to keep using the longer end of the cord and repeat this all the way through to the other side of the pattern.
Once you've made it all the way to the other side, this is what the pattern should look like. You can secure the ends at the back with an overhand knot. And then what we're going to do after that is cut off the excess ends and then secure the ends with glue at the back. To start the first bunny ear pattern, what we're going to do is take a long cord at 140 centimeters long. We're going to place it down horizontally and then in the middle spot there, we're going to take another strand of 140 centimeter long cord and we're going to make a double half inch knot. So we're making it on the center of the horizontal cord but also on the center of the vertical cord as well. But before we tighten the double half inch knot with the vertical cord ends, we're going to make sure that the bottom end is about two inches longer than the top end. Then you can pull on both cord ends to tighten. Make sure that this knot is right where it needs to be at the center of this horizontal anchor cord Fold the right end over to the left to match the ends to make sure that this knot is right in the middle. All you have to do is just adjust it accordingly by moving the knot. Now we can add two more double half inch knots to the left here. Again, match the ends so that the bottom end is about two inches longer, then pull on the cords to tighten. We want to leave the bottom ends longer because we will be folding that right anchor cord end over to the left for double half hitch knots underneath. Add one more double half hitch knot to the left. Once done, fold the right cord end underneath and over to the left and make three double half inch knots to the left. Now take the right cord end, bring it over to the left again for three double half inch knots to the left. Now repeat the same thing on the other side by taking the far left cord as an anchor cord with three double half hitch knots to the right.
Once we're done with the double half inch knot rows on both sides, we're going to take a strand of cord at 120 centimeters long and place it underneath the two anchor cords on the right and make a double half inch knot on the top and bottom cords similar to how we started the pattern. Start with the top double half inch knot first, then leave two inches of cord at the bottom for the bottom double half inch knot. Once complete, this is what the pattern should look like. Now take the far left cord as an anchor cord again, make a row of double half inch knots to the right. Now repeat the same pattern on the other side. Take the far right cord over to the left for a row of double half inch knots. Once done, take a 110 centimeter long cord, place it underneath the left two horizontal cord ends for two double half inch knots on the top and bottom cords. And now we're going to repeat a similar pattern with a row of double half inch knots on both sides. We are now completely done with adding new cords to this bunny ears pattern. What we're going to do now to secure both sides is to take the two bottom cords and make a diagonal double half inch knot. I'm making a diagonal double half inch knot to the left this time. And then the next time after that, I'm going to make it to the right. I'm going to keep alternating these double half inch knots. So now that the double half inch knot is made in the middle, take the top left and right cords and make a row of double half inch knots to the bottom. And now repeat again on both sides. Now, before we continue, we are going to take the bottom two cords and make a diagonal double half inch knot to the right. Now repeat for two more double half inch knots on both sides. And at the bottom of this one, we are going to make a diagonal double half inch knot to the left. Now what we're going to do to finish off the last row of the double half inch knots here is we're going to include the working cord with the anchor cord for the next double half inch knot as you can see. That's what I'm doing here. After I made the first double half inch knot, I included the working cord with the anchor cord for the next double half inch knot. Now pull on both anchor cords to tighten. And then what we're going to do is snip off that cord end from the first double half inch knot. Make sure you leave the same anchor cord as an anchor cord all the way through to the bottom. We're only cutting off the working cord from the double half inch knot from before. So we're starting our next double half inch knot by taking the last working cord as an anchor cord, pull on the anchor cords to tighten, then cut off that cord from the previous double half inch knot. Now repeat this two more times to the right and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. 
We're going to start off with a double half inch knot with the far right two cords. Then include the working cord with the anchor cord for the next double half inch knot. Pull on the anchor cords to tighten and then snip off the anchor cord from the double half inch knot from before. And now continue this pattern all the way down to the bottom on the right side. Once done, pull on all the cords at the bottom on both sides to make sure everything's nice and tight. And now repeat for a second exact same bunny ears pattern. Once you're done both bunny ears, this is what the pattern should look like. And now we can put everything together. We're going to start by snipping off any excess fringe. I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to dab it to the sides of the overhead knot we made at the back of the pattern to make sure that that knot doesn't come undone. Then at the bottom of the bunny ears, before we even attach them onto anything, we're just going to dab some glue where we had cut off the excess fringe, just so the knots don't come undone at the bottom of each bunny ear. And then do the same thing onto the other bunny ear. Here are the bunny ears that are nice and cleaned up. We're going to set them to the side for now. We're going to attach the ring onto the front of the mirror pattern first. To do that, you'll need a long strand of cord. And of course, like I said, if you already have glue handy and you like the permanence of having glue onto your macrame and mirror, then you can seal the pattern here, the ring, onto the mirror with glue instead of tying knots at the back with a separate strand of string. So for this part of the pattern, you will need a crochet hook to pull the 150 centimeter cord end through in between the vertical Lars head knot loops. So what we're doing here, instead of gluing the ring onto the mirror, we're going to tie it to the back of the mirror to secure the ring onto the mirror. Start with an overhand knot at the top, at the middle point of the two cord ends here. And then bring these cord ends down to the opposite side of the ring. Using your crochet hook, pull one of the cord ends through the other side of the ring.
Take your mirror and place it underneath the cord end. So you may have to loosen it back up if it's nice and tight. Then pull on the cord end again to tighten. Then with the other cord end, tie an overhand knot. Now bring the cord end separately to the sides of the ring. And then now for this part, you will need to again, pull the cord end through from inside of the pattern and then pull it through to the back side. Take the opposite cord end and do the same thing on the other side. Now tie an overhand knot on both sides with the single cords. Now bring it back to where we started and secure with some more overhand knots. And now the mirror should be tightly secured onto the back of the ring. Now we will take the bunny ears and we're going to secure it to the back of the mirror with glue. Make sure you know where to position them so that they have nice ears sticking out at the top. And then take some glue, dab it at the bottom of the ear and then we're going to place it right onto the top part of the ring on the back side of the mirror. And then do the same thing on the other side. And we are now complete with these bunny ears and we have turned it into a really adorable bunny ears mirror pattern. wrap with our bunny ears mirror tutorial if you guys have any questions or comments for me let me know in the comment section below i really hope you guys enjoyed this one if you love animal patterns and are keen on elevating your macrame skill set then you may be interested in our bochinot macrame community over on patreon this month over on the community we are doing the animal theme and we are making projects like a textured macrame owl 
and a macrame lion like this one. And we also have several other animal projects that we have released previously. Once you've joined, you get access to not only the newest tutorials, but all previously released patterns. If you are interested in finding out more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash for more details. I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this pattern tutorial. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite part of the pattern was and if you like more patterns just like this. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.